This is Jujutsu Kaisen, one of the most well animated series from this new generation of anime, made by the most talented and hardworking people of the entire anime industry. And this, this is me. Hi. A 19 year old boy who attempted to reanimate an entire sequence from Jujutsu Kaisen. Wait. What? In just seven days. What? So I started looking for a specific sequence that had the least amount of compositing with a simple drawing style. Just to make my life, you know, a tiny bit easier. So I ended up with season two, episode 17. Then the clap part two. But to be more precise, it's the Sukuna vs. Maharaga episode. This sequence that you're seeing right now was entirely animated by Sota Yamazaki, a top tier animator who was also the chief animation director for the show. And my unexperienced ass was going to try reanimate this entire sequence. I did not let the pressure get to me though, because the objective of this challenge is to observe and study what the pros do, and hopefully me and you can learn something from it. So I was confident, so confident that I was able to storyboard all the six shots in 40-ish minutes. And I mainly focused on getting the posing and the staging right, so it would be easier for me to animate later. I started the actual animation a bit after finishing the boards. I got the rough animation for the first cut down in like 30 minutes. But that was only possible because I was checking the original footage like every single frame. Same thing for the next, next cut. This one, I'm gonna show later how I did it. So stay tuned. I think this was the hardest cut to make because there's two characters moving in different timings and I was trying to make sure to make them move naturally. But I guess I got too focused on that because I wasn't able to fully recreate the character's movements. Like the best way to describe this is a half-baked cake. Oh! It could have been better, but you know, it's still cake, but it can give you food poisoning, so... I don't know, it's fine. I'm chill. I'm chilling. I'm on that good cushion alcohol. I right, day two, I was able to finish the rough for the second cut, but then I went back to the first cut to add Sukuna's face, because that faceless body was like... Creeping me, creeping me out, dude. Then I went back to the third cut and added Maharaga's wheel, the cut that Sukuna made on Maharaga's body, and the blood coming out of those cuts. And I tried to not reference the original footage while animating the blood. And after I finished it, I thought I thought I ate. Like I thought it looked so good. But then I looked at the reference again and oh my god. Mine looks like a droplet of water, while the original it's like a whole tsunami. Yeah, and then I played Fortnite and went to sleep. Ah! Day three, I had to make a sacrifice, okay? Boy, if you don't get Just a quick reminder that I have to finish animating two more cuts, clean them all up, add shadows, color every single frame, draw and paint all backgrounds, add additional effects, and add the camera movements. So, in order to make it in time, I have to abandon the last cut. It's a high angle camera with two characters moving smoke effects, camera movement, it's too much for the little time that I have. So my decision was to cut, cut that, that shit out. out. So I finished the two damn shots that were left and was immediately faced with a challenge that I was going to leave for my future self in day four. Because why bother? <sighs> why did my past self said that? So now, in the start of day four, I'll have to face a long and exhausting task that I knew it was coming. My dear viewers, that task is clean up. For this part of the process, I focus on cleaning up Sukuna to give him that anime line art style. While in Maharaga, I maintain those thicker brush strokes to imitate the line filter that they use in the curses on the anime. And this took a shit ton of time. So much time that I had to cheat in order to finish it in the same day. You see, in the first shot, I copy and pasted Sukuna's head in all frames. However, this is not a good practice. It's weird looking and you should not do this in your animation. The only reason why I did it is because I'm on a schedule, okay? Or else I would have drawn it in every single frame, no problem at all. After spending a whole day cleaning up and adding shadows, in day 5, I finally started the coloring process. And one thing that almost drove me insane is that every time I try to color something, these insanely tiny gaps would be everywhere. I lost so much time 
feeling these little shits. Oh my god. Ugh. After I finished coloring, I just started working on that cut that I skipped earlier. Remember? That's because this cut is just like really simple to make. All you need to do is just draw whatever shape you want and add a drop shadow effect on that shape and color the shadow white. That's that's literally what I did. By the end of the day five, I also started working on Maharaga's glow. If you notice, you can see that Maharaga's skin glows a little bit. And to do that, Nerd explanation incoming. You just need to duplicate the layer that has Maharaga's movement on it, then select all the white parts, invert the selection, delete everything that is not white colored, then add a blur effect on those parts, and we'll give this nice, very subtle glow effect. Or you can be like the average person and do all that in the compositing. But let me tell you something I can be anything but average. <laughs> With day 5 wrapped up, I was already in the late stages of production, so in day 6, I started working on the backgrounds. My objective was to make the backgrounds as close to the original sequence as possible. So I did um something cheeky, okay? I traced the background, dividing it in sections. And with the color picking tool, I was able to get the exact same color as the original. And then, you know, I did my magic, I blurred some things, I color picked some colors, and then I blurred a little bit more. <laughs> and this background is my favorite one because I was able to just erase Sukuna from the frame. And then I added a concrete texture on multiply and it looked awesome sauce day seven the last day i finished all the four backgrounds and i started working the camera movement it was honestly the easiest part of them all i just love doing camera work what can i say however my job was far from over do you see these two pictures do you see any difference in them if you said that the sakunas have different colors um you're right but he was not supposed to have different colors. What happened is that when I was using my editing software, Sony Vegas, to check the movement frame by frame, for some reason, every time I placed the video that I was using in the timeline, this filter was automatically placed on top and I have to manually disable it. But again, for some reason, when I went to color, I just screenshotted with the filter on and didn't notice that everything looked slightly green. So yeah, I had to fix all the colors from all Ranks. But anyways, the moment y'all been waiting for. Drum rolls, please. Hey. One week for four seconds of animation. Was it worth it? Yes. Did I nail it 100%? No, I think my biggest mistake was looking at the reference too much instead of understanding the movement and then replicating it. There's also other mistakes in the animation, like in the last shot that I completely forgot to add the cuts on Maharaga's body. But I did learn something. I learned to be a bit more snappier with my timing and to try cooler, more extreme poses. But if you guys want me to try reanimate your favorite anime, leave a comment down below. And do not forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I see you later.